So, uh, okay, I think you can hear me very well. Uh, so I'm going to do this presentation. First, thank you, everybody, for being here. Um, so I'm going to try not to go through an entire uh, review of our roadmap. Just I want to focus on the latest update we have on our products. Uh, so DDN, what I can tell you uh, is that we are HPC storage company. Uh, we are the leader in the market right now. And, uh, well, I'll do a very quick review of the latest uh, features in our uh, base product. It's the SFA12KX and some update on last metadata performance that we have done uh, lately. So first I will focus on the SFA12K just to do an introduction to you. So this is the roadmap of the actual uh, that we have uh, Actually, on the end, so this is the here is a nice summarize of all the products that we offer. Uh, what you can see here at the bottom, so we have the SFA12K family. This is this, uh, the HPC storage. It's a block building uh, storage that we have. Um, uh, so we have different products in the family. It's called SFA. On top of that, what we offer, so we don't offer just yes, a block storage solution, we uh, we offer a file system solution to the customer. So that is what we are able to provide from the uh, block uh, storage to the file system solution together with all the administration part. Mainly uh, the products that we offer for HPC are based on uh, GPFS and Luster file systems, so we offer solutions for both uh, file systems. And today I will do a quick update on the, la on the latest be benchmark we have run. So yes, on DDN we have, a so we don't have our own uh, file system. We work with the most uh, HPC uh, present uh, file systems, and we have a community very active. So our team. Uh, participate very uh, actively in the developing of uh, features for Luster. So well, additionally you can see we have a was a solution with Forojet storage, but if you want more details you can ask uh, us later and you can take a look on our uh, site. So what is uh, SFA? SFA is a block uh, storage appliance so this is built to provide a very high bandwidth. Uh, that on, on top of that, we are able to build solution. So what we have on the system is a system that is, uh, we have two controllers on the system. They are, let's say, hardware controllers. And these controllers, we are flexible. We are able to start with a small system with one enclosure, one G-bot, where we install the drive. And we can grow from one enclosure at 20 enclosure. Uh, on the latest enclosure we have, we can install 84 drive on just one enclosure for you hide. So this is the most dense uh, in the market and we can have a number of on one system with 20 enclosure is around 1,648 uh, uh, drive. With using even 6 petabyte drive we can have one block with uh, 6 petabytes of storage. Uh, so we support, we provide different levels of write at this level. Uh, our storage uh, has the option to connect via InfiniBand and Fiber Channel from the servers. Then we use the servers to build the file system solution. Mm, well, here you have some uh, nice graphics about some performance. So this uh, product, just on one rack, using even less than 10 enclosure, we are able to deliver more than 40 gigabytes uh, per second. Gigabyte, sorry. Mm. So we have a number of features. What I wanted to introduce was is uh, the latest uh, one. So going back here, so I mentioned that we have a system. We have two controllers. They are active, active. With that, what we build is a number of LANs, the LANs they are using some rate, and we uh, distribute the drive across all the, uh, all, the, uh, all the enclosures. 
So we can afford to lose even uh, two enclosures at the time. We do write six A plus two, and still we can continue accessing the data transparently from the servers. Uh, what happened when we lost an enclosure, for example? First, of course, if I'm a vendor and I try to sell you something, I'm going to tell you my system is very re redundant, everything is uh, replicated, this never, never fails. But, you know, it's not true. The system fails, it's hardware and fails. Uh, so what we have is, we have a right six, we are able to build, to build a volume to write 6A plus 2. If we have 10 enclosures, we are able to lose at 2 enclosures at a time. Uh, traditionally, what happens when you lose an enclosure and your system is down? Maybe. When you start your enclosure later, you need to rebuild the drive. And that takes a long time. If you are rebuilding 3, 4, 6 terabyte drive, that take, takes days. But uh, with the, lace, uh, the latest feature we have uh, included on the system, we call that persistent partial rebuild. So persi uh, until today we were able to provide partial rebuilds, so that means one drive fails. Uh, not physically the drive fails, it's some hardware components that is fail, like enclosure, like Sun Infiniband cables and SAS cable on the system. When the drive comes back, we don't need to reveal all the information. The controller keeps in memory a track of all the changes that happens on the system and it's able to reveal the information very quickly in some minutes. Now, we, are, we have improved that. Not only we are able to reveal drive if we, for example, your system is on production, something happens, some hardware component fail there, but it was a very uh, just one hardware component is not going to do your system to lose uh, access to a component. But imagine that you are not maintaining your system every day, there is some uh, logs, some fail here, it has not been maintained uh, properly, and then you have a combination of, of failures that make you lose uh, more than one enclosure, or one enclosure in this configuration. Uh, you, you have related any power and you have to take the system down. Even if you take the system down today, when the system boot up again, the controllers keep internally on the drive track of all the changes that were made, were made on the drive. So when your system is back, is back, we are able to rebuild the information very quickly. So here, this is an next scenario where we have a five enclosure system uh, where for any reason we lost one enclosure completely. In that case, imagine we have 84 drive, 4 terabytes each drive. This could be like 330 terabytes to reveal. If your system, because maybe it was related with any power loss or anything like that, in normal condition will take days to reveal. But uh, the controller being able to keep uh, track of all the chains will be able to do that in minutes. So your system, even on in the worst case, because this is a feature, that help us to uh, fix the system, the system as soon as possible on the work case. Of course, we have everything redundant. If any component fails, he has all the paths are redundant and that, that takes place automatically. But sometimes worse uh, scenarios happen. And in that case, we are still able to put the system back on a healthy status very quickly. So this is one of the new features I want to mention. And the second uh, one is the quality of service that we have added to the SFA product. So if you are familiar with HPC and parallel file system, you know on a parallel file system, the bandwidth, the speed of your system is, is defined by the slowest component on your file system. No? Parallel file system take uh, advantage to write in parallel or many components. So the speed, the slowest component define the overall performance. That happens on a file system per uh, virtual disk, not per LAN level. If one LAN is slower, affect the rest, the overall uh, performance. The same happen on one write group. If we have one LAN, one write group, and one drive is slower, 
that affect the performance on the drive. We have included quality of service, so when the system, imagine you are writing data to your, uh, to your write group, to your drive, and then one of the drive is slower than the rest. Because we write the, we write the information with parity, we don't need to wait until all the, all the drive has been read. Once we have on a REC6 the information from a drive, we are able to uh, return the information to the host. So now in this graphic, what you can see is an example. We have, this is a red group, so we have 10 drive and REC6. One of them is much, much slower. This is a number, this is latency on operation on the drive, and one of the drive is very slow. Normally, if you are, for example, familiar with GPFS or Laster, GPFS is very sensible to this kind of latencies. With quality of service at this level, it will be transparent. You will have a slow drive, but when you are reading the information, your performance wouldn't be affected. So these are uh, the two new features on the SFA level that I want to introduce to you. And then, uh, well, I will go to present you some, uh, uh, some update we have on benchmark on Luster. So on, if you remember, first slide, all portfolio for DDN, we have SFA, our core product, then we build solution, no entire HPC solution, file system solution. We have a big focus on Luster. Luster, as you know, is an open community. We participate, we collaborate uh, very closely with Intel on the development of uh, Luster, and we do a lot of research. So we have many customers, they are HPC from different uh, markets that they have very, the application profile is very different and very demanding. Some applications they just need high bandwidth, some applications they really uh, are very intensive on metadata or things like that. So this has been an update on some uh, metadata performance. Focus on Luster. Uh, and what we try with this test is to see how really the uh, metadata servers on a parallel f on Luster, uh, how we can uh, improve metadata performance on a Luster file system, no, if, uh, how we can do that. So we have used uh, a couple of benchmark tools. Uh, not sure if you are familiar with these benchmark tools. NDS survey, this is a, a tool from Luster, and then ND, ND test is a standard metadata benchmark that many, no, many different uh, uh, sites use. What uh, we have seen is uh, metadata performance uh, have an impact. So when you have a file system, you need to, uh, if you are dealing with many small files or you are creating many uh, directories on doing a stats operation, metadata performance is what is going to uh, define, no, it's going to, going to uh, define your performance here. In this thread, we see that single client metadata performance does not scale with threads. That means we have one client, this one Luster client connected to a parallel cluster file system. If you are a bit familiar with Luster file system, on Luster file system we have uh, metadata servers and object storage servers. So some servers dedicated only to serve metadata, the rest of the servers, they only serve object data. data. Uh, we were looking how we can uh, how we can impact performance on uh, metadata on a single client just to for the purpose to do testing on a lab. So normally here on a lab we don't have uh, 300, 400 uh, clients. So we wanted to simulate with less uh, number of clients. Uh, to do um, as much metadata operation as possible. Then we what we do is to use a some function, this is uh, to do multiple mounts of the file system on the client. 
Uh, we do that mainly for to do the test to be able to really uh, stress the metadata server. <coughs> uh, well, this is just uh, some information with some original path for Luster developer that our colleagues uh, enhanced to for the testing. And here we have uh, some comparison with uh, single client metadata performance. Uh, yeah, this is if we have only the file system mounted once on the on the client, or if we are able to mount the file system multiple times on the client. So we are able to run more operation, more metadata operation on the same file system, like like simulate. Uh, several clients on one. So the benchmark configuration that we use was like that. It's an SFA environment, some N4 NDS servers, and these are all the uh, file system data servers and a number of clients. So a total of uh, 32 clients. On the benchmark, we did mainly metadata operation, file creation, uh, a stats operation, no, list uh, attributes of uh, directories or file and remove directories and files. Uh, we compare two different patterns. Unique patterns meet we have one process, process zero on client zero is doing uh, is working on its own uh, directory. No, we have one directory per every process here, and on the uh, share uh, pattern. Here we have different process all working on the same directory. So they are creating directories, they are creating file on the same directory. So we did it, we did, uh, this benchmark uh, to see how the CPU on the uh, metadata server is impact the metadata performance on the system. So we did a comparison, we have, these are, uh, here we can see the performance with, uh, oh, I think I miss here, you don't see the CPU speed. It's just at the bottom of the slide. So we start with 2.1 GHz, 2.5, 2.8, 3.3, 3.6. So here we are increasing CPU speed, and then we run, um, we run the different operations. So gray is creation of directories, Red is stacks, operation on directories, and then directory removal. Similar, but for files on this graph. And we can see how on directory operation, increasing just CPU speed, we get above 20% uh, on uh, directory creation and 38% improving on uh, uh, directory removals. So if you have an application, how we translate that to the real world? You have an application that is going to be intensive on metadata, really matters if your metadata server, the CPU is higher. You are going to get better performance. This is limiting your performance there. Uh, yeah, so this... It's a similar uh, graphic. Uh, in this case, so this is when we have shared directory. So the previous information from, from the unique directory, so every process was writing, was uh, doing the stats on the same, on its own directory. Here they are all accessing the same directory. And we see that the files operation and directory, they have a similar increase here and here. We did a similar benchmark. So first we analyzed what is the impact of the CPU speed on the metadata performance. Here we did a comparison of number of cores on the metadata server, what's the impact on metadata performance. You can see really uh, on directory operations, it's not so dramatical, but here on file operation, really, we get over 80 or 120 of, uh, percent of improvement on file uh, operation when we increase the number of cores on the metadata server. This is when we use unique directory. 
we have a similar case when the process they share the directory. Here we can see that the impact is not so big. So if the process are all writing, doing stats or removing on the same directory, we don't have no uh, such a win on performance on metadata. So depends on your application, your application or afterwards. We have many process. Every of them they are doing is own directory uh, work or they are all sharing the information in the same location. So that is something we need has to be uh, considered when we are uh, trying to architect a solution. What really this customer needs, what really matter for your solution, for your application. How much time I have left? One minute, right? <laughs> Good. And this is a small summarize uh, here. So we have seen this is uh, multiple mount points. So we are using a special uh, functionality from Luster to do multiple po multiple points, mount points on the clients. Here we can see uh, mainly what have been increased on when we increase the number of threads. We get. Uh, mainly what is impacted is the number of files that we can create. When on one client we are able to uh, to mount the, the file system several times, really is on this uh, file creation where we have the biggest uh, improvement in performance. Well, I hope it has not been very dense, but well, do you have any questions from this part, from the previous part? The red part where you have been mentioning DNA, DNA. Yes. So you got 200,000 files per second in creation using one client? Uh, no, this is 32 clients, sorry. Okay. Yeah. yeah. 32 clients here we have. Here we will start one thread per client, so okay. increasing. Okay. Yes. 